the Aramaic language of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, spoke what language? Aramaic. Yes or no? And those people who are left on earth that still speak his language happen to be in Syria, which is a Muslim country, and they have been protected for 1,400 years by the Muslims. That fact allows you that all these lies going on the internet are basically that, a bunch of lies. Because if Muslims were out to get Christians, it would be real easy to take these people. Are, by the way, uh, to give you an idea, their lifestyle, these people are mostly farmers. You're, are you familiar with the Amish people, the Quakers, people like that? that? These are real simple people. No weapons. If the Muslims wanted to get rid of anybody, they could go there and do it. But they have a big respect for them. They're very kind to them and they protect them. It's evidenced by the fact that they're still there. And the fact that Mel Gibson had to go there to get the language that he used in the movie Passion of Christ. And in the movie itself, in the Aramaic language, you can hear the one who pretended to be Jesus. By the way, he got hit by lightning three times while they were shooting that. And he'd be like, isn't that a sign? I don't know. <laughs> Boom! Oh, wow! <laughs> okay! <laughs> anyway, it's true, he got hit by lightning three times. Anyhow, in the movie, you see the one playing the part of Jesus using that term, Allah. And then if you want to open up the New Testament, you can just look at it. It says Eli. Okay, in English, Eli. But actually, these are trying to pronounce words from the Aramaic language. They're trying to pronounce words from a long time ago when they did the translation. And the word, like... The word Allah, in some countries, they would say Allah. Like, for instance, Al-Bayt. I'm saying A-L-B-A-Y-T. Al-Bayt. But they'll say El-Bayt. E-L. They do that in Morocco. They use E-L when they go to English, yes or no? Yeah, or French, use an E-L, right? So, if you said E-L, L, and then the possessive, Ownership is E at the end of something. Beiti. Bait is house. Beiti, my house. Right? Is that right? So if I say Elahi, what am I saying? Huh? My God. Elahi. Elahi. Lima sabatani. My God, my God. Why have you deserted me? And this is what we find twice in the New Testament. The very words that we're using right now are still in the English inside of the Bible that they're handing out in the motels and hotels and not just in the translation, but actually in the very text itself. And then it says in parentheses, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Allahi, Allahi. Lima sabatani. Think about it. Think about it. Now, Elohim. Elohim, that's Old Testament. This is Elohim. This is for God, it represents it. But they never met, pronounced the tetronomogram. They never pronounced it because it's forbidden to do that in Jewish law. You cannot do it. This is why they don't put any vowel markings on that particular word. In fact, they say they've lost the word which means God. They say that. But yet Elohim is what we say, only we pronounce it Elohuma. Oops. It's again the same, isn't it? And how about Yahweh? Job. Job is witness. Anybody is Job's witness here? Have any Job's witness? No? They're all out and busy knocking on doors. <laughs> Good, I'm glad to see people are excited about what they believe. I have no problem with that. But by the way, Muslims don't go knocking doors. Uh, not a good idea for us, okay? <laughs> not a good idea. Hi, I'm your local Muslim. <laughs> you have right. So, Jehovah is definitely an English pronunciation 
of the word Yahweh. It's Yahweh without any vowels. Non Jews added vowels and said, well, it's probably Yahovah. But it's Yahweh. Wah. Now, where does that, how come V became Wah? Well, if you know anything, how many from Pakistan? Anybody Pakistan? Anybody know Urdu language? Anybody German? Anybody know German language? Yeah, well, in Germany is where they make the Volkswagen. That's what they call it, Volkswagen. We pronounce it Volkswagen. It's a reversal of the letters. And it's the same exact thing when we say Jehovah, Yahweh. Now watch. Let's don't guess at what it is. Let's just look and see. It says that the translating of this, going back to the verb, the root, and the Hebrew language in Strong's Concordance of the Bible, says that it's calling upon the living God. How do you call upon somebody? You go, hey, right? Hey, how do you do that in Arabic? Yah, Yah. Am I right or wrong? Yah, how, wah. Yah, how, How about this? Yah, al hay. Yah, al hay. Yah, al hay. Yah, al hay. What am I saying? I'm calling on the living God in Arabic language. The exact same thing. There's no difference. It's not like. It is a different pronunciation, but the same meaning, the same words. Just how you twist your mouth when you say it. So I'm going to ask you again, what's the most logical word if you want to be normal? Allah. And what does Allah mean? And this is now the point that I want to try to prove, so listen carefully. The word Allah cannot be made plural, nor can it have gender. It is not plural and it's not gender. Right away somebody say, wait a minute, in the Quran it said we, us, our. Throughout the Quran Allah is saying we, us, and our. That looks like a plural to me, there's your trinity. No it didn't. That's called the royal we. Just like when a king or queen make a, any kind of a declaration or proclamation, they say, we declare the following. It's the royal we in Arabic, just like we use the royal we in the English language. As far as gender, you say, well, well everywhere you look, it says, Huwa, which means he is. Or you'll find that when it says Allah, who, which means Allah, he is. But again, it's out of respect and the majesty of Allah not to represent gender. The word Allah does not represent gender and it is so unique. It's the proper name for the one who is so unique. There's nothing like him. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Say he is Allah, the unique. Uniquely, Ahad. One. The word in Arabic for one is Wahed. But the word Ahad is from that, and it means a one, no two is going to come after, you know? Well, you got one, and you're never going to match it. Kind of like my socks at night. I look under the bed, I can't ever find it. Okay. But I'm not going to compare a lot of my socks. I'm just saying, though, that number, Ahad, doesn't really have anything else like it. And Allah is uniquely one. So, for sure, this is the name that we use. And if you want to be a really good Christian, why don't you use the word that Jesus used? And if you don't believe me, believe Mel Gibson. <laughs> okay, next word. I told you I only had a couple words. Next word. Islam. What does Islam mean? Well, you could ask a Muslim, or you could ask some people in the media, or a politician, or a preacher. Let's go ask a preacher. Mr. Preacher, what does Islam mean? Islam means terrorism, boy. Get away from them guys. Whatever you do, don't read that book. That's exactly what my friend told me. He used to carry a big cross down the street, down the town. Yeah, that's what he told me. I'm not joking. He told me. Stay away from them, boy. They're a bunch of Turks. Hijackers, kidnappers, and they don't believe in God. They worship a black box in the desert, kiss ground five times, like some. <laughs> Anyhow, the word Islam, the word Islam actually doesn't have a translation. That's why if you look through the Quran, you never see this word translated. All the other words they'll try to translate. Like I said, Allah, they say God. By the way, I, I missed one part of that. How can you distinguish 
God, which is anything worship, G-O-D in the dictionary, anything that worship is a God, a rock, a stick, a stone, a bone, all of those things are worshipped. Therefore, they're all gods. Everybody's got gods, some kind of god. The ones that don't believe in that god, they believe in the money god, you yeah? know? Right or wrong? Somebody got a god, right? So how do you distinguish any old god with the one and only god? Well, you use a big G. Huh? Hey! <laughs> you know what's wrong with that? Semitic languages don't have capital letters. And besides that, what if you start the word, the sentence with that word God? You got to put a big G. Then I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? And when you're talking to somebody, they can't see it. You know, you're talking about, well, you know, the other day I saw this guy worshiping this God.